What's going on, golf addicts? Welcome to Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings. We are the Tour Junkies. I'm David Barnett. I got Pat Perry with me. It's it's Open Championship Week, and we are jacked. The final major of the year. It's one of our favorite events to watch all year. It's it's great. The Open Championship from Royal St. George's in Sandwich, Kent, England, right there along the North Sea, kind of southeast corner of England. It's going to be a great event, Pat. We're excited about it. We just got done recording our own podcast. Uh, you got tons of content that DraftKings is putting out all week. Our friend Pat Mayo is putting out a ton of content. Go ahead and give the the this video a like, a thumbs up if you don't mind, please. That'd help us out. Subscribe to the DraftKings channel if you haven't already because there's going to be, like I said, so much content already up or coming for the Open Championship. If you're playing you know, DraftKings DFS, if you're playing you know, betting DraftKings Sportsbook, which we're about to talk about for the Open, it's a great spot to be. Now, that being said, between our channel and the DraftKings channel, you can get all the course breakdown, you know, course detail information that you need from us and DraftKings and Pat Mayo. So we're not going to really get into that tonight. We want to talk a lot of picks, right? We want to talk about some early odds. Now, we are recording this on Sunday night, looking at outright odds posted by DraftKings Sportsbook to kind of see some names that we really want to start looking at and pay attention to. That being said, it's Open Championship Week. It is the, the tournament every year where weather can play a huge factor, and we've seen it happen time and time again at the Open. It's, you know, you have to be ready for the, the tee time advantages and the, and the weather wave advantages, whether you're going early, late Thursday and Friday or late, early Thursday and Friday. The weather advantage is a real thing, and we've seen it happen. So it's kind of tough to lock in your bets prior to like Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening for those of us on the, uh, you know, in the U S um, looking at the forecast, cause it can change quickly right there on the North sea. It's a little tough to lock in your bets early. Like we're typically used to doing in the States. So I would probably warn against some of that, you know, maybe you just, you know, some of the names we talk about, let's, let's mark them. Let's watch them. Let's see what happens to their odds. Let's see if they catch the good side of the draw. If there is a weather advantage to one side or the other, and let's be patient. I think that's the name of the game here at the open championship, Pat is patience. Now talking about the golf course, cause that's, that's weather. We're not going to get into a whole lot of details, but other than that, like at every open championship, you got to come in in good form. That's probably most important. You got to have a little bit of experience in open championships. We've seen, Older guys, experience, pay off in open championships of past, right? And you got to be able to be a grinder and kind of get up and down from everywhere, get out of these pot bunkers and deep face bunkers along the greens. You got to be able to avoid the fescue. You got to be able to be patient and take sudden changes in weather and conditions and all that stuff getting real squirrely on you. Other than that, what is there anything else you're kind of looking for in terms of conditions, in terms of players before you kind of start firing off your bets for the week? No, I mean, I think when you look at this course, almost any style player can win here. It's not particularly long, just under 7,200 yards. Um, I mean, the course itself is definitely going to play difficult. It always has in the past. Um, I do think when I look at, you know, your typical open championship style player, I want a guy that's creative. I want a guy that can grind, like you said. I want a guy that's a good scrambler because you're going to have to get up and down from kind of weird spots all over the place here. Um, so I think that's important. And you can go with your gut a little bit this week, okay? Mm -hmm. you know, just go with some guys that you know you've seen in recent form, guys that uh, you know are grinders, just in the, thinking through the back of your mind. You know, Go back to your experience just watching golf. You know, seeing guys are in good form and playing well, I think that's key. Uh, you know, one thing to note, um, just because it's a little bit different than we see, uh, you know, on the, the PGA Tour in general is, um, you know, a lot, of, uh, you know, more guys are going to make the cut this week. We got 70 and ties will make the cut instead of 65. But um, other than that, look, you just want guys that are a great ball strikers that can really control their ball in different uh, conditions, whether it's uh, very windy, whether it's raining, cold, whatever it is, that's what you want to look for this week. And your your winning score is likely to come in that two under to seven under, depending on weather yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So this is a grinder kind of course, and it's where pars are your friend. You know, take advantage of the birdie holes, make par on the others, try to avoid big numbers, understand you're going to get some tough breaks. You know, all those things come into play. And that means that if your guy makes the cut and he's kind of barely making the cut, 
it's it's hard for someone to like really pull away in in this you know in, in a tournament like this. So they can they can catch catch fire and go deep on the weekend and be all right. So uh, something to think about there, Pat. Let's look at the top of the betting board here on DK Sportsbook. John Rahm clearly leading the way as the number one player in the world, newly minted uh, U.S. Open champion, and uh, had a really good run at the Scottish Open this past week. You know, yes. we're recording this now. The Scottish Open was kind of the pre. The, the warm up for a lot of these guys, right? A lot of big names played the Scottish, where uh, uh, where Min Min Lee Kim or Min somebody Kim Australian won. <laughs> I can't remember Min Wu. I, I don't know. Not no. Anyway, he won. He beat Fitzpatrick and Thomas Dietrich in the playoff. You had uh, Lucas Glover win the John Deere Classic, but a lot of these big names got in some prep work at the Scottish, and John Rahm played pretty well. You've got DJ, Rory, Brooks, Xander, Spieth, JT, Bryson, Louie. Those are kind of the, the the favorites there at 20 to 1 or shorter. Any name here or a couple of names here that you're looking at to start? Uh, you, yeah, you threw me off, by the way. It's Min Wu Lee, by the Min way. Not a, Kim, not a Kim. You know, I know we love Siwoo Kim, but... Uh, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. My bad. Anyway, um, Huge Siwoo Kim <laughs> fan. On the shorter, the shorter end here, George Spieth is the one that I just gravitate yep. to here at eighteen to one. Actually, he and JT, you know, both of them together, best friends. George yeah. Spieth and JT, I think you can play both of them at eighteen to one. I think that's a very good number. So if we're just looking at the shorter odds here, less than twenty five to one, and then I like Louis East has he's in a twenty to one. Look, the guy just plays in majors. He's always up there. If we're going to talk about Brooks Kepka being a big game hunter when it comes to majors, why can't we talk about Usti? Now, Kepka wins them, Usti doesn't. Okay, but you never know when it might happen. You're getting them at 20 to 1. So those are the three guys that I really like here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know about the Louis love at 20 to 1. Kind of tough for me to pull the trigger on actually winning. Um, at 20 to one, I mean, he's only, he's now only won one major despite being so close. Um, and it wasn't open that it was the open championship a while ago, but this is a pretty solid field to, to have Louie at 20 to one. I actually don't like that number at all. Now I love the Jordan Spieth number at 18 to one. This is a perfect Jordan Spieth venue. So I'm all in with you there. He's the only one I have here. I, I don't, you know, I notoriously don't bet short numbers in golf. Um, you know, I just don't, I just don't. So Spieth is the one that really gets me going here at 18 to one. So I'm with you there. As we work our way down the board, I am a huge fan of like the mid range here. And honestly with the open championship, I mean, I didn't talk about this in the beginning, but you you don't see a lot of long shots when the the, the open championship, Uh, you know, Darren Clark won here in 2011 at the same golf course. I think he was a little over a hundred to one at the time. He was an old guy, but other than that, it's a whole lot of guys in that short to mid range. You know, a lot of guys in the top 40, top 50 in the world golf ranking win the Open Championship. That's been the case over the last 10 years or so. Uh, it's very tough to do for a, a long shot. So I'm not going to have a lot of, I'm not going to have a lot of hundred to one names. Uh, so a lot of these guys in this mid range is where I'm really going to have my card. You know, uh, st- stay. Patrick Cantlay is going to start that off at 33 to one. You talk about controlling your ball flight, controlling your distance, ball striking, uh, the chops to win a major, looking for his first major, playing well, just coming off a win at the Memorial, played well at the U.S. Open, played well at the PGA. Patrick Cantlay checks all the boxes. So him at 33 to one, I love. Patrick Reed at 40 to one, I also love. Grinder, major champion winner, uh, can play well in tough conditions, can play well in easy conditions. Some of the, one of the best short games in the you know in all of golf. Um, he's he's a, got a great game for the Open Championship, so I love him at forty to one as well. And then I guess I'm going to give you pa- uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick also at forty to one. I love Fitzy. He just lost in the playoff to Min Wu Lee. Is that right, Min Wu Lee? Yeah, mm-hmm. just lost in the playoff to Min Woo Lee, and he's been playing great all year. Uh, solid open record for Fitzy. Um, added some distance with the driver that'll help him here a little bit. You don't have to be long, but it definitely helps to be long and accurate, which he he surely is. Good short game as well for Fitzpatrick. So can't lay at thirty three. Fitzpatrick at forty and Reed at forty are a few of the names uh, as we start getting here in this mid tier that I like. 
Yeah, I don't mind all of that. I will say um, this 40 to one range, there's a lot of guys at 40 to one that I really like. Patrick yeah. Reed being one of them, Fitzy being one of them, and also Joaquin Neiman at 40 to one. I like him as well. Now, doesn't have a whole lot of experience at Open Championships. As a matter of fact, the last time he played here two years ago, he did miss the cut. But I just like how he plays and the way he can flight his ball. He is a fantastic ball striker. He can hit it low. He can hit it high. He can do like he just works the ball almost any way he wants to do it has a lot of control over his golf ball i think that's key here uh at any you know link style play um so i do like him at 40 to 1 and then also another guy um right there in that range at 50 to 1 brandon grace hmm. the guy we've seen play extremely well has two top 10s in his last well top 10s in his last two starts has a win this year has played well at Open Championships in the past. Um, even had a scoring record a few years ago. So I think uh, Brandon Grace makes a lot of sense there at 50 to 1. And then another couple guys right in that range as well. You got Daniel Berger at 50 to 1. I mean, Berger hmm. is just, look, he's, you know, we talked about this on the DFS show at nauseum, I think, but still. <laughs> He is one of the best players in the world. He's, what did you say, 16th in the world right now? And we're getting him at 50 to 1. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And Scotty Scheffler right next to him, also at 50 to 1. I like him as well. Yeah, I like Scheffler. You know, a guy that's playing well, you know, played well at the U.S. Open, played well last week at the Scottish Open. So right there, it's, you know, I love this 50 to 40 to 1 range. I think I'm going to kind of live in this range. And if you look at past Open Championship winners, we do always see some crazy people pop up near the top, but in general, it's going to be somebody that's top 40 in the world that's going to win this golf tournament. Yeah. And those guys are not going to be much further than 50 to 60 to one. So yeah. that's really the range that I love this week. I think I, I like Scheffler. If I had to pick one out of Scheffler and Berger, I think I'd go Scheffler with Berger, with Scheffler having the, uh, the T12 at the Scottish kind of getting over there last week, getting, you know, accustomed to things. Uh, Berger on the charter flight from the John Deere tonight, heading over to to England. Uh, so I think I like Scheffler a little more there. Both of them are on the Ryder Cup in that Ryder Cup bubble, which is another thing you could look at. Players who are, you know, in within the top 12 or the top six being locked in on the Ryder Cup team for for the U.S. and I think top four for the for the European team. But guys on that Ryder Cup bubble are interesting. Scheffler's at 14, and Berger is currently on the number at 12 for the U.S. Ryder Cup ranking. So both of those guys. Guys are wanting to have a good weeks, and a good week here would do a lot for them. Um, so yeah, I'm with you there. Moving down, there's two names at 66 to one that I like a lot. Now, neither one of these guys. Th this would be a first time major victory for both. Um, one is I'll start with Bobby McIntyre. Oh, oh, Robbie, Robbie McIntyre, as you as you may want to say, uh, the Scotsman. Robbie Mack finished T6 in his first ever Open Championship last year at uh, which or 2019, which I think was at Portrush, right? Um, so T6 for him. He made the cut, finished 35th at the U.S. Open, 49th at the PGA, 12th at the Masters. This young guy, young, sweet swinging lefty, has a lot of game and just a lot of balls. Honestly, he's just a he's a studly guy, young guy, hits it a long way, confident. He could win this thing. Like he he's got the chops to get it done at sixty six to one. So I like that more so than Robert McIntyre. I like at sixty six to one. And is Harris English? How confident does Harris English have to be coming into this thing uh, after after just winning last week at the at the uh, or two weeks ago um, in the playoff against Kramer Hickok, going eight holes deep in the playoff, won earlier at the Tournament of Champions. He's contended in these majors, played great at the U.S. Open. Um, I mean, Harris English is just golfing his ball. He's every everything T to green is is clicking. He's accurate. He's long enough. The irons are clicking. The around the green game scrambling is clicking. The putting has always been there. He's got to be as confident as ever. And actually, you know, this is his sixth Open Championship, and he's he's made five of six cuts. Um, 
it's it's pretty I mean I think Harris English is in a great spot here at 66 to 1. I'll give you one more name before we get before I get into the triple digits because I got a few triple digits I'll give you but I'll give you one more name and that's Kevin Kisner at 80 to 1. I think you like Kisner as well. Um but Kis is starting to trend nicely has a very solid open championship record. Uh loves loves open championships. I mean they they, they suit him very well. Almost won the thing in 2018, should have won it in 2018. Um and when when uh, I think it was Molinari, I guess he shouldn't have. Molinari played great, but uh, T two in 2018, thirtieth uh, place finish in 2019. This is his sixth Open Championship. I mean, obviously, Kiz is a world class scrambler. He can get out of trouble, and in these events where sometimes par is your friend, avoid the big numbers. Winning score could be that two under to seven under. Like that's a great spot for Kiz, who's coming in in good form, playing confident. That's a good spot for him. And I like him in crappy weather or great weather with these conditions. Either way, like in this golf course, I like him either way. So 80 to 1 right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, I'll take Kisner. Yeah, I love Kiz. He was one of my favorites here. Um, so I guess I may pivot off to that with uh, – I'll. I guess I'll go um, – you know, nobody is seen. Nobody seems to be talking about Abraham Answer at all this week. Uh, you know, and I, I wonder why he's at eighty to one. He's in good form. He checks a ton of boxes this week. Like I just don't know if the win equity is there for him. Like he may no win equity is not there. I, there's no way. He, I mean, he hasn't won on the PJ Tour yet. I just don't see him closing the door. Yeah, at the Open Championship. He could, I do. I don't mind like a top twenty bet for him. So yeah. eighty to one may may seem a little much. I, you know, Matt Wallace is right there at eighty to one. He hasn't been great recently, but I do still think that's a pretty good number for him. So I guess I'll uh, I'll go there if I'm not gonna not gonna play kids uh, with you. So okay, all right. Who are your triple digit? You got any triple digit guys? A few triple digit guys that I'll give you. One is Jason Kokrak at a hundred to one. I mean, look. Kokrak has been absolutely fantastic all year long. You look at his ball striking, everything else has been it has been there. And I think that, you know, he's a guy that can win on this course, that can win in an open championship. So at a hundred to one, I like Jason Kokrak. I think Kokrak uh, I, I I'll stop you there for just a second. I like the number. I think it's a good number. I think you jump on it. For a guy who's won twice this year now, um, He's another one that's that's kind of on the fringe of the Ryder Cup, potentially his first ever Ryder Cup. He's currently in 15th in Ryder Cup points. The key for Kokrak is he can't miss a green. Like his yeah. scrambling is bad. He just and 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 his you know, his driving and his approach play has been fantastic, right? So, but he just cannot miss greens. If he misses mm-hmm. greens or he has the wrong side of the weather draw for some reason and he starts missing greens, he's out. But if he's on or he's got, you know, easy conditions or something, like he could he could definitely win this thing. And a hundred to one, that's a, you know, you should take a chance on that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then uh Stuart Sink is 150 to one. Obviously has won an open championship before, has been playing great golf this year. I mean, you know, he could be like the next you know, like John Daly won an open championship and he wasn't as old as Sink is now, but then he won one like it seemed like what seven or eight years because he's won two hasn't he or is he just won one maybe he's just won one daily or sink daily uh i think he just won one he's a one one i think oh so. yeah he's won one but still you just never know a sink I, I just think sinks a, a, a good play this week and 150 to one the way he's playing uh lately with uh i just i, I like him at 151 so there you go two guys right there I mean, I like those two a lot. That, that's probably it for me. I'll give you one more, and that would be Brian Harmon. And and listen, ooh, Har- ooh. Harmon has has only made one cut in I believe five or six attempts at the Open Championship, which is a little odd considering his his style of play. I mean, Harmon is is kind of Kevin Kisner, you know. I mean, he's he's a short hitting, accurate off the tee. Um, very solid around the greens, excellent putter. It all just can it all click for him in the same week? And can he make up for a lot of that he lacks in distance? Can he make up for it with accuracy and great putting? And that's it. That that's what it boils down to. But what go, what's working really well for him in his favor this year, as opposed to all the other years he's missed a cut, is the form that he arrives in. Uh, now he did just miss a cut at the John Deere, but I honestly feel like he kind of just. I'm not going to say he mailed it in, but I feel like he kind of mailed it in at the John Deere. 
Uh, I'm not worried about the miscut at the Deer. Fifth at the Travelers the week before that. 19th at the U.S. Open. Eighth at the Schwab. Um, 12th at the Masters. Third at the Players. I mean, like the guy's been playing really, really well lately. And he checks he checks boxes. He's very accurate off the tee, like I mentioned. The approach play has been solid. He's one of the best scramblers in this entire field. He's one of the best sand players in this entire field. So if he gets in one of these nasty deep face pop bunkers, he can get out of there. It's just, you know, it's a long shot, but he's 150 to 1 on DraftKings Sportsbook. So it's, or sorry, 100 to 1. Maybe a better top 20 bet. Actually, it is a better top 20 bet. Like whatever that number comes out to be, it's, it's probably a much better thing to do top 20. But at 100 to 1, you know, put a little, you know, tenth of a unit, two tenths of a unit on him. I'll, I'll do it. There you go. So that's it. That's TJ After Dark presented by DK Sportsbook. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. Don't forget to check out our our, our previews on our YouTube channel over on Tour Junkies. You got Pat Mayo stuff going on. It's going to be a fun week. The Open Championship is great. Don't forget, kind of kind of be patient this week. Maybe, maybe don't lock in too many bets before Wednesday, and let's keep an eye out on the weather. Thanks for watching. May your screens be green. See you.